After a 2014 season that was self-proclaimed as putrid, Swan had proved in 2015 that at 31 years of age, he can still produce superb football. Swan, easy surely. When the Magpies took on St Kilda in round three, Swan not only achieved a special milestone, but he celebrated in style. The game marked the 151st time Swan had run onto the hallowed turf of the MCG as a magpie, as he surpassed Scott Burns as the Collingwood player with the most matches on the home of football of all time. 14 years after he first took to the G for the first time as a Calder Cannon, Swan had his best statistical performance since round 18, 2013, as he won 39 disposals in Collingwood's 74 point annihilation of the Saints. The Magpies began to reach peak form leading into the bye, and Swan was a huge factor in the side's impressive play. In perhaps the Magpies' most stirring victory of the year, Swan kicked his 200th career goal against North Melbourne at the 23-minute mark of the final term. Six touches for the term, more than anyone else, out on the ground, second goal of the afternoon. After a seesawing second half, the goal put the Magpies in front and helped push Collingwood into the top four at the conclusion of round nine. In the week leading up to his 250th game against Port Adelaide, Swan's face couldn't be avoided at the Holden Centre as the entire club got to experience a sample of life as Dane Swan. Swamped by juniors from his former club West Meadows, Swan told the press that he may in fact play beyond his current contract expiring in 2016. And I said I'm like a cockroach, those can't kill me. As old memories were highlighted, new ones were created as Swan continued his dominant season. A 33-possession game against the Western Bulldogs in round 17 started a month of football that would rival any other stage of his AFL career. He backed up his 33-touch game against the Dogs with 36 on the MCG against the Demons. And he wasn't done there. After bullying Carlton for years with his tenacious ball winning, Swan had it on a string as the Magpies edged out the Blues by 18 points in round 19. Not only did the tattooed marble kick three goals, but his 41 touches marked the most by a Collingwood player in 2015 and Swan's highest total since round 15, 2013. He'll be able to seal the deal for the Pies, and he does. After being hampered by injuries in 2014, the champ played 21 consecutive games this season before finally seeing red in Collingwood's round 22 clash with Geelong. A knee injury forced Swan from the ground at halftime, and wearing the substitute's vest, he watched from the bench in what would be his final game of 2015. The anticlimactic ending should not distract from what was a fantastic season for one of the Magpies' most reliable midfielders. With a blistering nab cup behind him, Steel Sidebottom was poised to become something special in 2015. Two goals, 19 possessions, and a dominant first three quarters against Brisbane in round one and the whispers were getting louder. Was the 24-year-old ready to become one of the elite midfielders of the game? Was this going to be the year that he took the reins from Swan and Pendlebury? However, sights of the midfielder unable to use his right hand to shake hands with opponents post-game sent questions of a different kind through the football world. What was the injury? How serious was it? How long would side bottom be missing? The answers came with varying degrees of positivity. Sidebottom had broken his thumb and it would be six weeks until he'd be able to return. Hopefully sooner rather than later I can be back out. With the loss of fellow midfielder Levi Greenwood also weakening the Magpies midfield, Sidebottom's absence gave the likes of Jordan Dugowie and Jack Crisp extended freedom to establish themselves in the Collingwood side. The youngsters shone. Feeds it off, Crisp! And a Crisp finish! Yet behind the scenes, serious work was going into getting Sidebottom back on the field. Not content with the weights and running associated to a rehab program, Sidebottom elected to train with the main group one-handed just under a month after the initial injury. As unconventional as the approach was, it clearly worked as Sidebottom made a triumphant return with an impressive 32 disposal game against the Gold Coast in round eight. It's a classy kid. There were difficult times ahead. After wins in all five of his first games, a tough seven-point loss in round 13 started a run of six straight defeats. Determined to maintain a winning attitude, Sidebottom failed to agree with defeat. Between the Magpies' losses to Hawthorne in round 14 and the Western Bulldogs in round 17, the 24-year-old had a remarkable 132 disposals at an average of 33 per game. The standout came against the West Coast Eagles in a rare home game at Etihad Stadium in round 16. 
The side bottom was everywhere as he finished with 38 touches. When Travis Varco flicked out a handball from congestion in the third term, side bottom pounced and immediately found the goals. He's as classy as in the side bottom. He's having a big day at the office. Cutting West Coast lead back to just nine points and putting an exclamation point on a phenomenal individual performance. It was one of many in a season Sidebottom would no doubt remember as a journey containing a number of highs and lows. While a total of 16 games is his lowest tally since his debut season in 2009, strong form when he was on the park saw the midfielder finish with a career-high disposal average of 27.3 touches per game. If Steele can remain injury-free in 2016, this young midfielder is primed for greatness.